The argument continues to rage over whether we should use stem cells from embryos for research. The embryos would be destroyed in the process. But there's little argument that the use of frozen embryos can be an effective option for millions of couples battling infertility. Tom O'Neill shows us one such couple and the process that made them parents in tonight's Fox Files Health Watch. What are you drawing to see? This warm picture of the Jurgensen family of Crystal Lake Park in West County had its origin in a cold tank of liquid nitrogen kept at 140 degrees below zero. Brad and Sandy Jurgensen married 14 years ago and four years later bought a house. And um, we bought it thinking we'd fill it with kids and found out shortly after that that we couldn't conceive children. Doctors found Brad had been born without the ducts needed to deliver sperm from the testes. It was very devastating for me. Uh, the whole thing, because I knew it was my problem and I was taking it as my problem, but then Sandy helped rem uh, remind me that we were a couple and it was our problem. Brad had sperm surgically removed and frozen. Freezing sperm is done by mixing the sperm with egg yolk to stabilize it, then adding other chemicals to lower the freezing point. It's then frozen and stored in a tank of liquid nitrogen for future use. Later, using a procedure dubbed ICSI, Dr. Sherman Silver injected Brad's sperm into 25 eggs he collected from Sandy. We try to get 10 or more eggs if we can because the vast majority of human embryos are going to be non-viable, abnormal, chromosomally abnormal, and not result in a pregnancy or a baby. So this is a very nice, as Kathy says, a very nice embryo. It's the Jurgensen's had nine viable embryos, like this one, develop. We certainly can't safely put those all back because multiple pregnancies are very dangerous. Three embryos were transferred to Sandy. Six were frozen. The idea of freezing is that you can save extra embryos over and above the number that's safe to put back for a future pregnancy. Embryologist Kathy Linehan handles the delicate three-hour procedure of freezing the embryos. The idea is to dehydrate the embryos so they don't expand and explode when they are frozen. To draw the water out of the cells, they add sucrose or sugar, and they use a type of antifreeze called propane diol to keep ice crystals from forming inside the embryos as the temperature drops. That's right, antifreeze. In fact, we use basically the antifreeze that's in your car that keeps your engine from freezing. It's the same stuff, yeah. The antifreeze goes into the cell. It, depre it depresses the freezing point so you don't get crystallization. You can Until later, when ice crystals will form on the outside of the embryo and draw more water out. The embryos are sealed in what resembles a straw and placed into a computerized machine that slowly drops the temperature. They are then transferred to this portable container of liquid nitrogen that keeps them cold during final preparations. Then the embryos are plunged into a tank of liquid nitrogen for storage indefinitely at 140 degrees below zero. And the cell's basically been freeze-dried. With the future frozen, the Jurgensons received news that the three embryos transferred to Sandy had produced a pregnancy. We were both on the phone and we just screamed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was great news. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going up to uh, Sandy's folks uh, when we found out and we were crying because we were so happy. Jenny Jurgensen was born in May of 1995. When the Jurgensons decided they wanted more children, they turned to the embryos they had frozen. The thawing process is delicate, timing critical. After being removed from the tank of liquid nitrogen, the straw holding the embryos will be warmed to body temperature, 98.6, over the next hour. Water that was extracted to freeze the embryo is slowly allowed back in. Three of her frozen embryos were thawed and transferred to Sandy. Dr. Silver says using three embryos helps the success rate. The average, national average is about 17%, and last year, this year, we're running about 40%. And it worked. That was in July of 98, and we tried it, and another miracle. God blessed us with. Mm. Drew Jurgensen was born in April of 99. So, any plans for more? No, I think we'll stop at two. Uh, our age, uh, having another baby, I think it'll just <laughs> grind us right down to a halt. <laughs> so what happens to the Jurgensen's three remaining frozen embryos? Sandy and I have discussed, uh, we'd like to uh, give them up for adoption. We know what it's like to not be able to conceive a child, and we would just be happy that somebody else would be blessed with a child. On the Fox Files Health Watch, I'm Tom O'Neill.
It appears the laws really haven't kept up with technology regarding frozen embryos. Dr. Silber says he interprets Missouri law as prohibiting anyone from destroying or discarding viable embryos. But others tell us the laws in, in neither Missouri or Illinois specifically address that issue.